It's time to do science! We're talking about the secret cards from Hemlock Vale on Optimal Play today. I'm Brandon. I'm Kyle. I'm Steven. That continues to work, despite us never uh, coordinating on it. We got Very it nice. Now. Yeah, and, and uh, if you're just joining us, these are the videos where we drink beer and look at the cards from the newest Arkham Box for the first time and uh, share our thoughts. We've already done Rogue and Guardian, which were fine. So we're at three beers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're all pretty much on our third years. We are doing these all in one day, so uh, look forward to us getting decrease or increasingly delirious. Love it. <laughs> um, before uh, before we start, let me suggest that you like the video and and subscribe to the channel. That would help us a lot, and it's the only way for you to help us out. We don't have a Patreon or anything. Mm -hmm. um, with I that, mean, we can give share Venmo. Or yeah, <laughs> oh, I'll put your your QR oh your QR codes on the screen over your face for the, for the <laughs> remainder of the video. Alright, sounds good to me. You like Steven's takes, scan the code. <laughs> yeah, the person you like the most takes, you give them like two bucks. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, so I guess we we uh, we divvied up the cards uh, in a literal sense between us in the same way, meaning you're holding on to Kate Winthrop. I have her. I think she was in the original like announcement article, and I remember she is weird. But I remember nothing else. So I'm excited. Me neither. <laughs> She's like a human version of Kate Winthrop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did she yeah, marry bones so. and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of a spin off of Barkham. Yeah. yeah. It's a weird, a weird, weird, a weird take. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Well, Kate, uh, as we mentioned, is the scientist. That's mm -hmm. why we're doing science stuff here. Thank you for explaining. Yeah. That. Of, yeah. of course. Uh, she has two willpower, four intellect, two combat, and four agility. She is Miskatonic and Scholar Traited. Mm. Uh, you begin with the game, the, the game with Flux Stabilizer, inactive side, face up. I'll learn about that in a moment. Uh, as a free trigger action, you can move one clue from Kate Winthrop to a science or tool asset you control with no clues on it. More tool play. Yeah, but since it's on a different investigator from Wilson, there's yeah. no, it's not like there's any synergy forming. <laughs> nope. Okay. <laughs> Uh, but more tools are important. All right. Forced. When an asset you control with a clue on it leaves play, place the clue on its location. Hmm. Her elder sign is a plus zero. You may move one clue from an asset you control back to Kate Winthrop. Interesting. So we're moving clues from Kate to assets. And then the elder sign, which is usually like a cool bonus thing, mm -hmm. is moving clues from assets back to Kate. None of that means anything. I don't know what any of that means. <laughs> Maybe her deck building one. Yeah, I, I know that the, the FAQ update and the insert in the... I don't know why I'm pointing off camera as if the audience can see that the <laughs> open box is over there. Uh, they both clarify that you can still spend the clues that are on mm -hmm. um, her assets. And also that uh, they still get... I guess this says if they leave play, they get dropped. But also if she leaves play, be it being defeated or All retiring, stuff they, they dropped. get dropped. Um, right. But yeah, I don't know why you'd want to do any of that. Me neither. Let's find out how we build her deck. <laughs> She's a 30 deck size uh, with deck building options of Seeker cards 0 to 5, so all Seekers. Uh, science cards 0 to 4, so you can't get those mythical, you know, 5 experience science cards everyone loves. Uh, insight cards level 0 to 1, and all neutral cards. Her deck building requirements also include the Flux Stabilizer, and failed experiment, which I assume is her basic or her signature weakness, plus one basic weakness. Kate Winthrop has spent years researching in the basement of Miskatonic University Science Building, passing up funding and academic proceed, uh, prestige in the pursuit of progress. Whew. Her single-minded focus finally paid off with the invention of the Flux Stabilizer, a powerful device capable of channeling a new form of energy. However, the price of progress is steep. The first successful test of this groundbreaking in invention took the life of her friend and mentor, Professor Young. Whoa, whoa, didn't know that about her. Since then, Kate has worked tirelessly to understand these alien currents in the hopes that she might find a way to reverse their effects. That's cool. Definitely a more uh, compelling story than Wilson's, like, yeah, he fixes your roof and sometimes there's elder things there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. Well, I feel like we should, because we don't know what she does at all. Yeah, give us the let's, flux let's, stabilizer. Let's talk about yeah. the flux stabilizer. So it begins on its inactive side. I assume the other side is active. It is an item, a tool, a science-traded asset. 
it is permanent. Forced, after a clue is placed on, excuse me, Flux Stabilizer, search your bonded cards or discard pile for one copy of Aetheric Current and shuffle it into your deck. Flip Flux Stabilizer, keeping all tokens and attachments. Um, should we flip it so, or talk about the, <laughs> the Aetheric Current now? Oh man, so, so that happens when you move a clue to it? So, so like that's after what, a clue is placed. That's yep. what activates it. That's you get this card it. shuffled into your deck. All right, give us the active side. Then we'll okay, get one okay. cards. Yeah. All right. So normally uh, we would shuffle something into our deck and flip it. That's uh -huh. what's happening. So the flip side is the active side. Permanent, Kate Winthrop deck only. A reaction, when you place a clue on an asset you control, get plus two skill value for your next skill this phase. This next skill test mm. this phase. So again, she can place clues on the flux stabilizer as well as any other science or tool assets she controls. And this this is the upside is when she puts clues on them on she gets an skill asset. Bonuses? So it could be flux, it could be anything else. All right. Yeah, I'm not weird. I'm still not quite following. So but when you flip a card, mm -hmm. uh, we keep all the tokens and attachments on it. So there is already one, you know, clue here after you flipped it. Okay, and um, nothing there talks about it flipping back if it ever does, but maybe the current. So there's what? There's two different. There's two different bonded currents. So I, I guess I'll read them both. Yeah, they are different, or is it two? They, they are different. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so the first cur current I'm going to talk about is the Aetheric Current Ugoth, which is a science uh, bonded to the Flux Stabilizer. Play only if Flux Stabilizer is on its active side. Mm. Um, fight is move all clues on the assets you control to Kate Winthrop. For this attack, you may use intellect instead of combat. If you succeed and the attacked enemy is non-elite, you may exhaust it and move it to any location. Draw one card, flip flux stabilizer, keeping all tokens and attachments. Okay. So it just does one damage? Yeah. But it moves them? Yep. Punches, mm. if you succeed, and they're non-elite, you may exhaust it to move so to any location. It, it pulls all the clues back. Did it give? Did it scale with the number of clues it pulls back in any no, way? That, that's what I thought it was. Oh, weird. Too. It just resets her distributing clues on her assets. Yep. All right, what about the uh, the other one? Which, I mean, it is good, because remember, it's when the clues are placed on the yeah, assets that she gets that the, the skill boost. Yeah, the skill boost. So. All right, we'll see if this one's any better, because that <laughs> felt pretty mediocre to me. Uh, the Aetheric Current uh, Yoth, instead of Yoth, mm -hmm. is, uh, again, bonded and is an evade, this time moving all clues uh, on assets you control. Is that the same? On all, all assets you control. Uh, to Kate, and then for this evasion attempt, you may use Intellect instead of Agility. If you succeed and the target is uh, of the evasion is not elite, shuffle it into the encounter deck. Oh. Draw one oh. card, flip the Flux Stabilizer. I mean, that's pretty good. That seems yeah. better. That does seem better. Uh, so that's, that's underwhelming, I think. That's that's other, other than her weakness. But we can get to her weakness. Yeah. Because uh, that's not usually inherent to, like, understanding the character. Mm -hmm. um, that was a lot. Kind of for a little. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I don't think... She's, she feels like this is not her main part of her game. Right, these things are just like yeah. They are they are little trinkets that you use to pull all the clues back to Kate, so that you can do the shuttling clues to make the flux stabilizer active and do the plus two plus two over. What's and her over. main way of getting clues onto the? Um, She's a free fascinating. trigger ability that just moves one clue to another every turn. She can yeah. uh, uh, as many times or, as you want. or a oh. million times in turn. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so just every time she gets a clue, she wants to move it at some point in order when to... When she wants to hit a, yeah, a big skill to test, it. yeah. Okay. And it has to be to, an a, a, to a science or tool asset you control with no clues, with on, no it. clues on it. So Oh, so she can only do it once to the capacitor. Yes, sure. True. Yeah. She can only put it... The, the clue that goes on there in the beginning to flip it active is yeah. the only clue that's going to be on so there. So each cycle of activating the stabilizer and eventually playing the current, which kind of resets all the clues... Uh, she can get that skill boost as many times as she both gathers clues and has science or tool assets. Oh, yep. so the the so etheric the, ones move from all of the assets. All assets. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. think I was in my head. It was just the capacity. just from the kit. No, no, no. It's all all assets to K. And then her elder sign. Now that that makes a little bit more sense. Her elder sign shuttles one clue from any asset back to her. So, so it, that it gives her another option. It, it, it enables the plus okay. two one more time. Yeah. 
kind of makes sense. So she she just seems like a skill horse. Then she doesn't seem like she does anything inherent. It would, and and maybe this is the case for more investigators than I would realize. But I feel like if all of that text, all that text, all those signature cards, that whole process got deleted and she had five intellect instead of four, she'd be better. (laughs) (laughs) Probably. (laughs) Like, so it just seems like a lot of... um, She is very... But again, it's versatile skill bonus. Bonus is not just the intellect, putting her at fours across the board or sixes on her high stats. I will say she's a much better solo seeker than most besides maybe Ursula because she can evade very well. She can sometimes uh, shuffle an enemy. She can do a damage. Yeah. No, She's I agree. definitely a better solo seeker. I agree. It's a good point. That's um, a great point. The one caveat to that being in a solo game, you are less likely to have a lot of clues. You're like, you've got four of them, it's time to spend them to advance the act, now you have zero again. Yeah, yeah but like, like, how many enemies do you have to deal with that, like, you know, getting a couple of, like, six evades is not going to, you know... Like, well, I think, I think yeah. you want the skill boost for High Shroud, for so many things, right? Mm-hmm. For bad Mythos cards... Um, all right, so far yeah. underwhelmed, but let's talk about it. Yeah, give us our weakness, too. Weakness. Yeah. All right, it's the failed experiment. It's a weakness blunder. <laughs> Revelation test uh, willpower three. This test gets plus one difficulty for each asset you control with a clue on it. Ooh, oof. And she has two willpower, right? <laughs> she has two, basic, yeah. I mean, obviously, you probably want to shuttle a clue at this moment, but that also makes the skill test harder. Maybe yeah. you don't. Yeah. Um... <clears throat> For each point you fail by, you must either take one horror or place one of your clues on your location. Mm. Interesting. So I know we talked about uh, spending clues from any asset. We can do that, obviously. Can we place clues on location? So if you have to, like you're playing the the deck archetype that puts clues back on the location, can that come from assets? Oh, that's a good question. I don't actually. I don't actually know the answer. My to that. guess is yes. Yeah, if you're playing, uh, was it like press pass and other things that, that care about dropping clues? Can you uh, drop the clues from the assets, which both give you those effects and free up the assets again? Yeah, so it seems like if that works, that's pretty cool. Steven, finally, the archetype is, is viable. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know you love that archetype, and I think Win- Winthrop might be the best uh, best option for it. And that, at most, it can fail by three? How much? What's the uh, no, that? because it increases the difficulty of the test. So oh. at most by, you know, seven. Oh, wow. All That's right. a nasty weakness. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty brutal. Um, I think similarly, if you... Uh, I don't think she can take it naturally. She can't take any mystic. No, it's similar to the other ones that care about for each point you fail by weaknesses. You could just negate it all with a um, the deny existence card. Mm-hmm. This is such a weird... I'm trying to figure out flavorfully what's happening here. She, you know, is like looking around the city of Dunwich for the key to the hidden chamber, finding clues along the way. She moves one of those clues to her uh, you know, chemistry set, a science card that we're about to talk about. Like, what what happened there? What did so, she do? Okay, here's, here's my she, guess. Is she, like, analyzing I think she's, I think she's, she's inventing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so here's my guess, is that, like, clues represent, like, insight into the, like, mythos. Yeah, they're... So if a clue is on a card, then that is, like, a tool that has, like, been used for, like, mythos research. Like, you have, like, your, uh, you know, fingerprint kit has found, like, evidence of old ones, and so it's, like, yeah. a little riskier. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's, um... Yeah, it seems like, for the most part, she's, like, using her various science cards to, like, analyze... Further analyze the things she's found. It's... Clues are so um, abstract. Like, clues also can uh, represent you making progress scrambling forward on a chaotic train, right? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it doesn't always, but, but I guess when you have this many cards and scenarios and stuff, uh, it's not always going to work. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's fine. It's, it's interesting. Fine. I've said in I've had opportunities to say in every video so far that I like mini game cards and investigators, and this is definitely one. Mm-hmm. But it just seems like it's a lot of cards and like mental load and stuff for an occasional plus two. For what is plus two? Yeah. yeah. Huh. We'll see. It's and fun. you have to. And because I mean, maybe she's a seeker, so she would naturally have a lot of tools and science cards. But it's also something that you have to build your deck around. Yeah. To squeeze the value out of this. Yeah. Hmm. Huh. I mean, she starts with one in play, and she always has one in play, which is a one-time oh, yeah. plus two. Yeah. But only after you flipped it, because 
And then it keeps the clue that's on it. It though, keeps so, the clue, yeah. which is bad because you it want doesn't. It. it doesn't reset. You can't do it again until you then play the card it shoveled into your deck, mm -hmm. or get another time. She can only do this to science cards or science or tools. Okay, yeah. so that makes it a lot. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. So a lot of the assets she would be playing. So Wilson or... just plays out a bunch of tools and teamworks them all over to her. <laughs> Setup done. <laughs> all right, we found the combo. There it is. <laughs> all right, Steven, want to get us into the the secret right. player cards? Uh, chemistry chemistry set. Two cost asset with the book icon. Item, tool, and science, so Kate can double play it. <laughs> um, an accessory slot. Uh, for an action, exhaust chemistry set. Investigate. If you fail by exactly two, discard chemistry set. Succeed by exactly zero, gain two resources. See, succeed by exactly two, draw a card. Succeed by exactly four, discover an additional clue. All right, so a mm. new archetype has come up with this now being the second card to the katana that cares yeah. about an exact succeed, there needs to be some tech in this pack that gives or you just some... everyone yeah. plays that uh, rogue card that's like, if you're succeeding already, add two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, there are some cards that, that are, not a ton, are, do, do that. Uh, like Granny Orn also does, right? Or there's, there's isn't a, there a, that's, I think there's a survivor Orn's ally that... if you're failing. Yeah. It's um, like if you fail, fail by one... It doesn't, she, it doesn't also work for succeeding? It's it's if you fail, you get plus one skill value, um, and then her upgrade is if you would fail, um, you. It, it's the way it's worded is slightly different. Basically, yeah. the the level zero one doesn't allow you to succeed. The level two one allows you to succeed, mm -hmm. or level three one. Uh, yeah, I mean this is like. All else equal, it's going to trigger one of these things ha half the time that you pass, right? <laughs> Since it's every other yeah, value, yeah. Yeah. Uh, which is interesting. Um, it is exhausted when you use it, so you like can't spam it and hope for the best. Mm -hmm. and it's an accessory slot. Like that's all a little hard to justify. Mm -hmm. I'm curious how many other access as far as like how to use your accessory slot. How many of them are tools or science cards? Is this kind of a new? Did did she need something to go in that yeah. slot that also yeah. works with her? Yeah, uh, that's possible. Powers, I don't know. I feel like the gaining, like, the fact that all three are, are very good, like, I feel like Seeker yeah. is, ever since the Milan taboo, like, the gain two resources has been really powerful. Drawing cards, always good. Yeah. Clue's obviously amazing. Um, it's, a, it's, it's all, and then it's also, like, did this card really need the uh, potential to discard it when you fail? Like, makes it more fun. Yeah, I it's guess. chemistry. I guess. Like, yeah. You're right. It's definitely yeah. flavorful. It, needs uh, it, yeah. it can explode. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Power-wise, I think that the card would have been fine without that. Uh, yeah. And much more playable without it. Uh, hmm. I don't know. I think, it, I think it could be a little bit too powerful without it. Just because it's like, you know, you're going to base Maybe investigate sometimes. Sometimes, but so often you just want to do... I mean, like, this works with deduction for clue compression, but yeah. so often you want fingerprint kit and no, the other works. things that get you more than one clue at a time. I think it's good. I think it's, I think it's interesting. Well, if Kyle thinks so, it must be. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I, I would play with it. I like, yeah. I like cards that do, you just randomly do cool <laughs> shit. So, um, like, it is definitely a card that I would, would play with. Oh, um, and we have a new friend. Uh, another doctor... Hasn't there already been a Dr. Charles something? There's Charles or, Kane... There's what? Christopher. Maybe not. Okay. This no, just seems... Not, like, all, all of these, like, uh, secret allies, are just their names just yeah. <laughs> run together. But anyway, this is Dr. Charles West the Third. He knows his purpose. His art is one of those arts that looks um, oddly specific, like this might be an FFG employee, mm. um, who, you know, get put into art as their, after their some number of years at the company. <laughs> uh, anyway, it's a three-cost asset. Uh, it's an ally and science-traded, takes up the ally slot, uh, you have one additional hand slot, which can only be used to hold a tool asset. And after you successfully investigate by exactly one or three, exhaust Dr. Charles West to deal one damage to an enemy at your location. Uh, and he has one health, two sanity. That's interesting. So he fills in the gaps in the chemistry yeah. set so that every success does something cool, which I like, other than the fact that you're not investigating with enemies at your location all the time if you can help it. Also, when once you put these two cards out, you're going to succeed by five. <laughs> mm. you're right yeah and then you get nothing constantly yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's when the guardian that's throwing all the blessings in the bag like, uh, becomes the bane of your existence <laughs> i think this is cool uh it's also he gives you a tool slot and is science traded so good for kate having lots of places to 
to put oh, yeah. Points. So it doesn't yeah. have to be a... It can be an ally, I guess? Yeah, yeah. If, if, if it's a science-traded ally, yeah. Can Wilson take this? I was so? just thinking that, and I think the answer is no. It's so sad. Yeah, no, which yeah. I was like, this is so good for Wilson. Maybe, yeah. I don't know. Potentially, because I think Wilson is... Uh, since he can take a lot of secret cards, I think he's likely to investigate a decent amount. Uh, it would be great for Wilson. But I don't think he could pick it. The Wilson mystery remains unsolved. <laughs> All right, what's next? All right, microscope. Two cost asset with a book icon, item tool in science. Uh, so this one Wilson can take. Uh, yeah. Reaction, after an enemy or location is successfully abated or defeated, exhaust microscope to place a resource on microscope as evidence. Mm. Uh, mm. And then double action, investigate, you get plus one book for this investigation for each evidence on microscope, max of three. Uh, if you succeed, you may spend up to two evidence to discover that many additional mm. clues at your location. And this is one hand slot. And uh, evidence cards are cool for Daryl, right? Mm -hmm. This is something that Daryl Simmons would uh, maybe run. I, I like him a lot. And I'm seeing this more as a card for him than anyone else. <laughs> uh, I mean, I think it's good for, for Kate still. Like, you're... You, only ever would take this investigate action if you plan to spend the two evidence, right? Because it's a double action. Because otherwise you're taking a double action to investigate a, a plus a couple, but only get one clue for a double action. That seems rough. Well, yeah, I think you, you're spending up to two evidence, right? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, up to two, so two evidence. To discover you're that spending one or two evidence. At least one, yeah. But it, it, only, it only becomes more efficient than a basic investigate as far as clues per action if you spend two. Correct. Oh, uh, yeah, I... I don't like committing to finding opportunities to spend two actions in a block where I don't have to. It does really seem to be a theme of this box with all the devil events and everything. Mm -hmm. But also, like, as the seeker, you know, like, who's taking this that's going to be at the location where the enemies are defeated or evaded? Wilson. Like, Wilson's defeating them with guardian cards. Yeah. 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 This, yeah. It could w be a good Wilson, Wilson card. Wilson can take this. You uh, could also... Oh, well, in that one. Joe can also take this. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it seems okay. And yeah. Kate's decent at evading, so maybe solo Kate, but yeah, probably not true. multiplayer Kate. And if you run Dr. Charles West the Third, you're just popping enemies left and right anyway. So <laughs> true. true, you can kill him yeah. with Charles. It feels like honestly, you probably trigger it more from the evasion than the defeating of enemies. And and Kate with her ability to get plus two pretty regularly puts her up to a six of eight. Yeah, she can, someone. she can evade well. Yeah, yeah. That's no, a good point. I think that's a that's a good Kate card for that reason. All right. Uh, oh, sweet. We got to the mask, so you know it's going to be good. It's the mouse mask, the Meek Watcher. Uh, it's a one-cost survivor asset. Uh, doesn't take up a slot, but is a mask and says limit one mask per investigator. It's also an item and a charm. It uses two offerings. You replenish one after you reveal a location or put a new location into play. Uh, I actually remember a conversation on a Discord where people had seen a couple of the masks, or maybe it was on Reddit, I forget, and were trying to predict what the replenish criteria would be for the other classes, and I saw this guess. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so that person was right. That's pretty good. <laughs> when you reveal a location or put a new one into play, it's a very seeker uh, yeah. thing to look for. And then you can spend its offerings to get a plus two skill boost like the other masks, uh, willpower or intellect here. Makes sense. Again, I think it's great. Yeah. Yeah, I think these masks are good. These masks are good uh, practically if you don't replenish them, and if you do get a couple replenishments, it's a gr it's great to get four plus twos or so mm -hmm. for for one cost. Now, does the word replenish mean that it can ever go over two? Yes. Okay, that is what it means. Uh, so you use them. Use yeah, it. don't don't hoard them. Yep, use yeah. use at least one. Yeah. Uh, although, and I think you tend to like keep this one at one. Interesting. This replenishes after you reveal a location. That makes sense. Generally, that means you moved there. Yep. What does it mean for you to put a new location into play? <laughs> like, <laughs> it's interesting. That yeah. doesn't seem like something that happens that often, unless you're. I, I was gonna probably, say unless you're Luke, but I guess even that's not. Well, unless it counts as like any any time a location has been into play, it counts. As yeah. Even. So like maybe like yeah. if you spend clues to advance an act, you put those new locations. Maybe. In play. Yeah. I don't know. The the way it, ju it just says after you reveal a location or put a new location into play. Yeah. Maybe if you're the lead investigator, you're the one. Who yeah. play in that case. I don't know. I don't know. There, there's a, there's a lot of. Maybe, lot of... maybe it's it. Maybe it's if you re reveal a location or. Anyone, anyone put new locations into play. 
Yeah, but I guess like then it would say or, yeah. or should just say anyone. Then it would just say after you reveal a location or a new location enters play mm-hmm. would be a clearer way to say that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't yeah, know. We're, we're running into at least one of these per class. I feel like a kind of a card that can be a little, a little vague. Yeah. Hmm. Um, okay, cool. Nice. It's good. The masks are good. That's good. Next up is control variable. Uh, one cost event. <laughs> will and book. Insight. Science and cursed. Fast. Play after you, an investigator reveals a curse token during a skill test at your location. Discover a clue at your location. Oh, Straightforward. You gotta give us the Lovecraft quote, too. Oh, yeah. There was a solution, which he injected into the veins of dead things. And if they were fresh enough, they responded in strange ways. From Reanimator. Huh. I'm not familiar with that story. Mm-hmm. Oh, it, you've never seen the movie? There's a movie titled Reanimator? It's a fantastic movie! I don't think That's I've heard insane. of it. That's insane! I've also never seen that movie. It's the best Lovecraft movie by far! Huh. Hmm. It's so good! Uh, my old roommate was in the musical version of it. Um, <laughs> Wait, sorry. That's a musical version of this yeah. Lovecraft story? Yeah. <laughs> Why have I not heard of that? <laughs> yeah, Kyle, I thought you knew something about musicals. Apparently you know nothing. <laughs> that uh, can't be real. You're, you're bullshit. Yeah, no, no, there's no The way. director <laughs> of the movie, which is a very popular cult 80s horror movie, also made a musical that played in Hollywood for quite a while. Um, was it, it called Rocky Horror Picture No, show? it was called Reanimator the Musical. <laughs> it actually, uh, it started with um, Norm from Cheers played one of the roles. <laughs> There's no way. There's no way. <laughs> this is, this no, is making this up. No. You're making this it's up. not April Fool's. <laughs> YouTube commenters back us up. He He's pulling our leg. <laughs> oh my god. I cannot uh, believe you guys are such Lovecraft noobs. <laughs> Oh, that does remind me, and I guess I won't say it because I think it could be a spoiler for a campaign that, like, kind of the big bad for better or for, as a way of describing it, is not obvious. Uh, but there's a pretty recent Lovecraft inspired movie that I want to watch before playing the campaign mm-hmm. that I haven't seen. Um, I don't know that I will go out of my way to see Reanimator though. It's so good. <laughs> You're crazy. I mean, if Norm is in it, I gotta go see it. Well, Norm was in the musical. He's not in the movie. Oh well, I definitely see the musical. <laughs> Uh, the card's fine. It's maybe kind of bad. I don't, I don't think um, it, I don't think a seeker takes this card. A card that that you uh, get one clue if you line this up with being at a place where you want that clue. When an investigator also there can't draws a curse. Mm. I think I think mystic like a mystic curse build takes this card as like a little cheeky one clue. I think working on just a better card than this costs one more resource that has no restrictions. Yeah, yeah like, <laughs> that's fine. Sure. Yeah. And the one resource. I guess is working hunch fast. It's yeah, not, it, is it, is. it is. Yeah. 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 I think I think that's a better card than this. Working hunch is better than Joe because I feel like Joe can't re- count on this coming up. Oh, this would be time. terrible. He doesn't like situational things yeah. that need to be on top of his insight. No, uh, I, right I moment, think the curse seeker I think, refers um, to working hunch. I think Trish Trish likes this card. If you say so. Trish likes anything that can get her fast clues. Uh, this sounds like a, based on its name alone, this sounds like a Trish card. Testing Sprint. Anyone who's agile. What? Yeah, this is like a tech card in like a game. Well, <laughs> sort of. The 20s. Part of Netrunner. But it's, it's a green glow, but it's an abacus in the art. <laughs> oh, so it's radioactive then. <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. Uh, this is a one cost event that is the latest uh, double mm. event. So far, every class has had at least one. And there was a neutral one. Uh, and this is insight traded as an additional cost to play it. Spend an action. Investigate. One at a time, investigate your location and each connecting location once each in ascending order of shroud until you either fail to investigate or successfully investigate each eligible location. What? Weird. So you start at the lowest and you go higher. You, so you're investigating your location and all connected locations. Mm-hmm. Which, that sounds amazing, but yep. it does stop if you fail. Yep. And you it tells you to go from easiest to hardest, meaning you're likely to at you least... Get a couple. It would be way worse if you started with the hardest, because then you might just... Yeah, yeah. Just, spend two actions to fail. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's fun. I think so, it's very good. Like, it could be, like, three or four clues, but it also could prevent yeah. you from having to move. Yeah, yeah, like remote mm. remote investigation is always really strong. Uh, one issue I see with this is that if you are just being thorough, 
clearing a location, moving on to the next. This, I think, forces you to investigate clues, uh, inve uh, no locations clues. with no clues, yeah, and you, and, totally. and you, sure. it's the end of the line if you fail, at, even though there was no upside. You know how you know this is talking about the 2024 tech industry? Is that not only is it talking about testing and sprints, but also remote work. <laughs> oh, that's why it's the sprint part that made you. I thought you were just oh, going off yeah. the art when you said it was a tech. <laughs> no. Oh, testing sprints like, like, like a PI sprint. I work for a tech company. I should have known this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> that that missed me. Wow. <laughs> uh, it's fun. It's this is one of those cards that. Um, Kind of like uh, map the area is the one that attaches to an area and reduces tests there. Oh, yeah. Another card that I think is not that great in practice, but I enjoy putting it in decks. Yeah. Uh, this feels like it, it hits that niche for me. It's um, what's what's the uh, what's the investigator that loves moving around Monterey Jack? Yeah, and yeah. Monterey Jack takes this because he's like he wants to move. He's like I'm gonna leave a clue behind. It's okay. I'm gonna remote get it. Okay. Yeah. Because right. I mean. You could, on the flip side, this reduces the amount that you need to move by getting all these other clues from a distance. So I don't know. I will, yeah, but, but part, he part likes of, to move. Party wants to say point. the opposite, that he doesn't want this card because it reduces the amount that he needs to move. Yeah, it's also <laughs> it's also good in like the min decks that never move that just like commit backpack uh, mids. Great for men. Who sits in one place. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Uh, overall, I like my decks generally have like one to three slots for bad cards that I just want to play with, and oh, uh, this feels find it. This feels oh, like it goes in that slot. Actually, yeah. fantastic Amanda card when she puts deduction as her skill card, because all of those investigations have deduction on them. That's right. great. That broke it. Yeah, I'm sold. Amanda. I'm sold on that. I'm a sold yeah. on an Amanda for this. That's great. Right. Another double event is next. All right, thorough inquiry. Two cost event, book, agility, and wild, insight and double. As an additional cost to play, spend an action, investigator state location, draw a combined total of five cards. You decide how many cards each investigator draws. Whoa. Whoa. Uh, so you weren't with us for the rogue video. There's a event called Bank Job that is exactly this. It cost double and everything, except it's uh, eight resources distributed among investigators. Um, and that I thought was okay, but worse than Faustian Bargain. Uh, isn't there a... There, it's a similar There's card. a Faustian Bargain equivalent that gets curses and distributes card draws, it's right? three card, yeah. So yeah. It's a similar ratio. I feel, like no one, I feel like no one plays that. Uh, I think people play text, that. Curse yeah. text, curse text play that. Oh, yeah? yeah? Okay. Um, this seems like a fantastic deal card. Yeah. A zero cost, oh, yeah. oh. draw five. Yeah. I mean, it, Oh, it, yeah, Joad card. It has to, because it's not, he doesn't get an action. It's just discounted. He doesn't yeah, play that but fast, like, right? When do you so not two, want your party actions. to draw five cards? Yeah, it's two like actions, every time it comes out. It's draw. just that this needs to hit the top of his deck in a round where you're happy to spend two of your three actions on it. Which that, I think, to me, feels less likely than you are. I always want to draw five. I don't yeah. <laughs> Steven will sit there and draw three cards and in turns no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, definitely, if, if you're willing to take that risk that it's just going to come up at a time when you're like, I don't have two actions to spend on this, then I, then I agree. Goes I'm going to play deck. a Joe that relies on other people to fight, yeah. and I just focus on drawing cards. Drawing cards. This is a card that probably goes others. in your it goes in your Joe deck and would not go in my Joe deck, and I love that about it. I like, I like cards that have kind of different, uh, different play styles would, would like it or not. So, yeah, yeah that's cool. Uh, throw the book at them is the next event. This is a one-cost event that's a gambit and improvised and says, fight, choose a tome asset you control. You get, oh, that's right. I saw this previewed. I don't like it. I'll get to it. Um, <laughs> choose a tome you control. You get plus X combat for this attack where X is that asset's printed cost. If you succeed, you may either automatically evade the attacked enemy or after the attack ends, you may resolve an action or fast ability on the chosen asset. <laughs> um... I'm surprised this doesn't discard it. For some reason, it seems like if you throw a book, it would discard the book. But I guess it doesn't. You just choose kind of the one that tr gives it the bonus and you can use its ability. Mm. Kid, you you took a lot more... You took that a lot more literally than I expected you, you to. Uh, do you like it, Steven? So, and this may be why you don't like it. Thematically, I'm not understanding why yes. throwing the book <laughs> evades is... it. It should damage it, right? The reason I don't like it is because most of the time that these are, that the, like, it's a snarky in quotes title, it's yeah. like a 1920s-ism, yeah. right? Uh, or, 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 and it's usually more of like a, a, it's, it's usually kind of a slang way of saying the thing that they're doing. And this is the opposite. It's taking something that is 
like a slang or kind of a metaphor statement, but like it's doing it, literally. doing it in a literally. And for some reason that rubs me the wrong way. So I, like, I would like, be okay the, if it was literal, but I feel like literal would be like do X damage where X is the assets cost or something like that. Like, like based yeah, on the way evading the them doesn't, I think evade is fine because it's like, who, who's going to say that, like, you know, throwing a book at, like, a big slithering monster is going to do anything to it? But it might distract it a little. So the monster's going to pick up the book and start reading it? <laughs> like, how does this work? Well, it's like smokescreen, you know, like, they hit them in the face, they can't see for a moment. Uh, <laughs> it is, how weird is it for a seeker card to let you evade with combat? <laughs> <laughs> like, ultimately, that's what this does, right? But yeah, it yeah. also, well, I mean, probably more commonly... It lets you. Oh wait. Oh, I think you still do the damage. You do one. You'll damage. You'll do one damage. So, yeah, okay. so the other thing, it can it can either do one damage and evade using a combat yeah. fight, or it can deal one damage and use an use an Trigger. ability on that yeah. tome. On the buff. Yeah. I mean, so it's probably good with like a combat tome because you could do a lot of damage. Um, sure. What's a com? What's an example uh, of a combat? Uh, tome? There's some mystic curse one. Yeah. Mm, I don't know. Um, can't think of it now but it's like for every, every doom on it it does yeah next, or not damage. missing doom one i mean yeah um and then there's there's another there there is an identified item that transfers damage from you to enemies mm -hmm. um although that's uh, it's it's still vague to me despite we saw in the insert in this that it, it kind of clarifies this for a, a different wording um like the one i'm thinking of that, that moves damage to you that's the curse is it just Cursed Tome? It's the curse-themed uh, unidentified or identified item. And it's the one that... Uh, no, sorry. It's not curse-themed. It's the one that's based on... Uh, it's four actions, but it's less actions the more cards you have in your hand. Mm -hmm. So if can you use that ability if it would cost three actions? Like, does this let you use it for free? Does it let you use it for two actions instead of three? Mm -hmm. uh, I, that's still confusing me. Anyway, I don't have the answer. No. I think this is probably good in some tome decks, but it is thematically confusing. Very, very niche. Yeah, I feel like they have a list somewhere of all the, like, cute phrases that could be card names, and they are like, well, we gotta get a couple more of them in this box. Let's do throw the book at, the, throw the book at them. and It's improvised oh. traded, so... Uh, what does that mean? Alessandro can take oh, it. Oh, Alessandro, she can take improvised cards, huh? I think. That's so weird. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Mm. She wouldn't take it, but she could. Yep. <laughs> she would need a tome to go with it. Yeah, but she and can play was, uh, all the rogue new... cards that steal cards out of other people's hands. There was, there was like the blackmail yeah. file or something like that, but that also oh, wasn't good. Actually, there actually was the, yeah. the rogue card, the Damn rogue me. tome, the... Uh... Damning testimony? So there's a customizable one. No, no, no. The, from this box, there was the one that added, the one that you really liked, the one that added curses for resources. Wasn't that... That was a tome? I thought it was. The... I might be something script up. or scripture. There's an incredible card in Rogue that uh, it's an accessory slot though, so I feel like it's not a tome. I could be wrong though. I, I think I, remember. I think it makes more sense if she's stealing the tomes out of Daisy's hand, and then she's like, "I can't read this," and just chucks it at the monster. <laughs> that would be. <laughs> I do like it. Very wrong. I do like it. <laughs> All right. Uh, is it me? I think it's you. All right. Yeah. Transmogrify. One cost mm. events. Will and book. Gambit and science. Uh, evade. You may use book instead of agility for this evasion. If you succeed and the enemy is non-elite, attach transmogrify to it. Attach enemy gains massive, cannot move. <laughs> Reaction. After you evade this enemy, discover a clue at its location. Limit once per round. God. So you just, oh. like, you transmogrify it to a big, a giant abomination. Well, so the, the quote is fantastic. That is good. I said, blow it up, not blow it up. <laughs> <laughs> that is very good. Um, so this turns the enemy massive, but gives a... So it gives you the need to evade it every round, <laughs> but a reward for doing so. Interesting. That's a real weird one. I mean, the nice thing about massive enemies, especially if it's, like, it's non-elite only. Does Kate require uh, the card she moves clues to to be an asset? Because this yes. is a science card that remains on the table. <laughs> it can't, she can't put a clue on this? Asset. Damn. Okay. But I think it's a fantastic Kate card, because she's very good at evading, and this lets you turn evades into clues. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you never have to kill the enemy, because it can't move. You just, like, let's say it has, the location has two clues on it. You evade it once this turn, you evade it once next turn, you leave, you never deal with the enemy. And you could yeah. farm the, uh, what was the thing that gave you something for evading or defeating? 
the oh the, the microscope the microscope yeah. yeah oh yeah so that's a nice combo there yeah it's, yeah we're, wait, it seems why is together. the microscope so effective on a giant monster <laughs> <laughs> You're actually just, like, cutting off a tiny bit of tentacle and putting it under. <laughs> Well-funded is the next card. It's a Seeker skill with a wild icon. It's fortune-traded and says, while you control a science or tool asset, well-funded gains a wild icon. While you control three or more science and or tool assets, well-funded gains two of them instead. Every cent of that research grant counts. Bad. Good? Great. <laughs> I think it's all right. I think unexpected I think, courage is just as good ninety percent of the time, <laughs> but it's unexpected courage with an upside, and the downside is negligible. You're going to have a science or a tool asset. Yeah, Kate if, is if you're literally a, if you're a seeker. Yeah, it's, like, it's impossible for this to be worse than unexpected courage in Kate, right? I'm possible. Uh, what, oh, because oh, her, flux, right. her flux stabilizer. Yeah. Oh, you're it's right. It's like literally impossible. So you oh, would okay, never okay. run unexpected courage. In yeah, I'm coming around to fine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's not, it's not like best case scenario. It's a three icon skill card. It's not. Yeah. It's not. You got to reinvent uh, your outlook on the game. But uh, I think it's good. I think it is fine. Yeah, and, and uh, we've we've talked about. Um, wait, why am I blank? Now I'm blanking. Wilson? No, the the seeker that tucks a skill card. Oh, man. oh man. Amanda, for some reason, Amanda's name uh, slipped my yeah. mind. Um, like, as long as she has three or more science or tool assets, a triple wild for her. Pretty good. Like, Solid. Yeah, I think that, I think this will this will be played. I think it'll be played in this deck and this deck alone. Mm, I disagree. I think I think well, seekers. I don't know how many unexpected courages we're making it into modern seeker decks, but I think that you would never play this in a seeker deck. Uh, or you never play unexpected courage over this. I think that you you have a science or tool asset in play for ninety eight percent of the game as a seeker, like starting with your first action. Maybe uh, the the situations where this is worse than unexpected courage are so negligible as to be not worth. I think considering. it's mostly Kate, but I think Joe plays it sometimes because he cares about wilds because he sometimes fights, sometimes investigates. Mm, so. Yeah, I like that. Another allies next. Gabriel Carrillo, four cost asset, one XP. Trusted Confidant, one book icon, Ally, Scholar, and Cursed. Uh, you get plus one book. I always love when allies do that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, reaction, at the start of your turn, add a Cursed token to the Chaos Bag, draw one card. Those are my two Whoa. favorite things to do in this game. <laughs> this is so good. <laughs> That's pretty good. I will say, um, Seeker has always, as far as how Seeker interacts with Curses, Seeker has, like, uh, Rogue has been the ones that they... Put curses in the bag as a trade off for doing a cool thing, and Seeker's the one that draws them out of the bag to do cool things. Well, but, seen like no, no, but there is that like, event that you put curses in to draw cards. Mm -hmm. So that is there is some history of that. That's true. Yeah, um, but yeah, ge I, th I generally think of Seeker more as the one that wants to have the bag full of curses, whereas Rogue mm -hmm. like puts them in and then actually has ways to then control yeah. them, right? To yeah. take them back out. Mm -hmm. uh, and and we just haven't seen any new payoff cards, mm -hmm. so. This one's great. This is still pretty good. It's, it's probably worth, worth even if you don't have payoff cards, it's probably worth putting a curse in the bag yeah. to draw a card. It's also, yeah. it's not forced, so if for yeah. some yeah, reason, exactly. like, you really don't want a curse, yeah. you don't have to trigger it. Also, you can't trigger it if all the curses are in the bag. Sure. Something to keep in mind, because that's part of the cost. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think it's good. Um, I do think you need to be playing a curse uh, build for him to be worth your ally slot. Thank you. Right, like, it's, I think it's a, get rid of the ally slot and it's just a very good card. Because uh, it's worth a curse to draw a card. I, I, yeah, I think it's great. I think it, if you're playing a curse deck, no brain. Uh, Seekers get a new talent called Steady Handed. It's two cost, a level one uh, talent and science traded asset. Limit one per investigator. Oh, so we now have a Steady Handed slot. Um, oh, you're probably... Oh, you are looking at a copy. Oh, mm -hmm. this one has two... Okay, this one has two copies. Mm -hmm. huh. Oh, because it's not limit one in your deck. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. One okay. Purpose, yeah. Um, as a reaction, when you would succeed at a skill test, exhaust steady handed, you either succeed by one more or one less. <gasps> if you succeeded by exactly two, heal one horror. There it is. That's there what puts all yeah. the three other cards we saw that care about. Except that how much not all of them can take this, I think. Uh, I mean, it's, a, it's like Seekers can. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, we've seen the uh, succeed by exactly two in Guardian. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of guardians. Oh, that's papers. true with the katana. Yeah, I don't sure. know. I don't know what's going on with the katana. <laughs> uh, but this makes the chemistry set and Doctor Charles West and even the microscope all. Um... Wait, the microscope? No, wasn't there a third one? Maybe not. Maybe it was those yeah, two. Maybe it was those two. Uh, I think the third but, one. But, was still, katana. but still, but still, I think now all of a sudden, chemistry set, Doctor Charles West, and Teddy Handed makes a pretty cool core to your deck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I really like it. 
It also um, works with Vicious Blood 2, right? Because don't you need to succeed by 2 True. to do the full damage for that? Yeah, it's good. Any of the or deduction 2, any of the... Succeed yeah. by... Yeah, deduction 2. Um, what was the other one I was just thinking of? Oh, the uh, the new Mystic Trinket that if you guess exactly how much you succeed by, you draw a card. <laughs> That came in Jacqueline, I believe. Uh, yeah, it's not that new anymore then. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Crystal Pendulum, I think Crystal Pendulum, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's it. So, if you use this in a Joe deck with Katana and Vicious Blood 2, you can do, like, five damage in one attack? Yeah, yeah, yeah you're getting something together there. Yeah. All right, I, I'm, I can buy it. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, just it's a science-traded asset, so Kate can do her clue whatever yeah. it is that she's doing with, with that uh works <laughs> works on this <laughs> um who knows what she's doing i don't need I, the, the the flavor of moving clues to like tools at least you're like oh i'm using my chemistry set to analyze this i don't know what steady handed is supposed to represent uh so get us out of here steven all right fine tuning <laughs> two costs one xp event book and agility insight and upgrade attached to a tool or science asset you control limit one per asset reaction after attached asset exhaust, exhaust fine tuning to ready attached asset. Hmm. Oh. Um, well, we finally found another card for Wilson. He can take this because it's an upgrade, right? I think yeah, he can that's take correct. upgrade traded. Mm. Uh, and then it can go on his tools to ready them. To what end? Was he the improvised? Who can say? Too? I think he might have been the improvised. Improvised and upgrade. And upgrade, yeah. 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 Um the problem is I feel like a lot of tools have like limited supplies mm -hmm. or like microscope is a double action, so mm -hmm. it's not that Yeah, different. you wouldn't put this on like a fingerprint kit or something that you're exhausting and running out its supplies. Uh but yeah, so, yeah. um definitely I mean I guess Trish could do this, like lock picks, right? Like they have the ch chance of getting mm -hmm. discarded but yeah. or returned to your hand, but until that happens, you can use them as much as you can exhaust them. Um, oh chemistry I mean, set? You can double chemistry set? Uh, yeah, you exhaust it to do its action. Yep, yep. Fine tuning lets you uh, do chemistry set twice. It lets you uh, get resources on microscope as evidence or spend those evidence. Well, you yeah, you wouldn't do its double action twice very yeah. often. <laughs> I don't know. Like it, feel, it feels plenty. like it feels like a solid Wilson card though because uh, if you're triggering a tool asset, he's getting plus one to it, so it's like giving you two of those actions per turn. With plus one each. With plus one each. Yeah, I... And then maybe with the, uh, the one that Steven hates, the, um, cleaning card, now you're using your <laughs> fingerprint kit seven times instead of just three. Uh, now, now we can start to piece something together there. Yeah, and I'm sure there's plenty of tools we're not... There's tons of tools in the game. Yeah. I'm sure there's plenty of exhausting tools we're not even thinking of. That, like, yeah, I actually think that this is probably a, a great card that will yeah. be in a lot of decks. I think so. Yeah. Uh, and then we've got Esoteric Method, a level mm -hmm. one... Why did you gasp? I just saw four wild yeah. icons. That's <laughs> <It's> pretty good. <laughs> level one skill card with four wild icons. It's practiced and cursed. After the skill test ends, add one curse token to the chaos bag for each point the performing <laughs> investigator either succeeded or failed by. <laughs> Rumor has it the university's last phrenology professor enjoyed an unnaturally long tenure. Um, yeah, it seems she seems to be a child. Uh, it's very interesting. It seems like it's the archetype. It, it, I know, I know where you're where you're going right now, and you're basically saying it's not the Mystic card, which just adds one before the test. And yeah, that one's way better. It's worse than Promise of Power, and it's, yeah, and that one's lower level. But I think what the archetype is, it feels like there's you know very much like push all the curses in as fast as you can archetype, and then use that ally to keep them there at a steady ten or whatnot. Well, also. You just use steady handed to reduce the amount you succeeded by if you want less curses. Or increase it so you get more. Or increase it if you yeah. want more. There's got to be some payoffs for drawing the curses in these last couple cards, though, because I'm really. Um, so far, I mean, there, there, there are a good handful of them in the Innsmouth box, but so far I feel like this set of cards requires the Innsmouth box. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, I agree. Yeah, totally in, in a way that. that's kind of odd. So I feel like we got to find, like, why are we putting all these curses in the bag in Hemlock Vale? Mm. Uh, maybe it's this, oh, it's, uh, it might be this next card. This was one of our preview cards, Steven. Prismatic Spectacles. Two cost, two XP assets. It's the lens to the other world. <laughs> Book icon. Item relic and cursed. As an action, add a curse token to the chaos bag. Investigate. You get plus two skill value for this investigation. If a curse token is revealed, so you got what you wanted, mm -hmm. you may exhaust prismatic spectacles 
to discover one additional clue at your location. Yeah, this card's very good. Mm-hmm. Um, you can't have this in chemistry set. Oh yeah, this is an accessory slot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's not a tool, so you also can't re- uh, ready it yeah. with uh, fine-tuning. Or, or, or you or, drop or, clues on it. And all the tool synergies we've been looking at don't work with this. But. but it only exhausts if you reveal the curse. So let's say that you investigate two or three times... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, you'll probably get, like, like if you investigate twice, you'll probably get, like, three clues. Yeah, so you're going to add, add those curses, which we... I mean, this is a reason that they're good, but not a super powerful one. Yeah, I mean, I, I still think, yeah, you're right. Like, the one that I've been thinking of in the back of my head is the Yellow Covenant, which changes the modifier and the curse from a minus two to a plus one once right. per round. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I feel like a lot of these cards that are caring about the curse, like, would really want that. But, um, those covenants were so good that, yeah, like, without them, if you only owned Hemlock Vale and a smattering of other expansions, yeah. like, uh, you'd be hurting for those, I feel yeah. like. Uh, but I'm surprised those didn't hit the taboo lists. They're so good. Oh, wait, or did well, one or two of them did. Yeah. Ancient Covenant is, That's no, right. is no longer any investigator. It's just mm. you. That may have just been, a, like, an error in the card. Because all the others work that way, right? Where it's, or it's, no, it's, they're usually at your location. They're at your location, but now it's just specifically you. Oh. When you are that's drawing. What the, that's what the adjustment did? Yep. Weird. I just played okay. I will uh, also say, if for some reason you don't have Innsmouth, um, which hasn't been reissued in the, in the new format yet, right? I think uh, it just got It just reissued. got announced. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if, if you're waiting for the new format for Innsmouth to buy it, it's very easy to just print out covenants. They don't have to look like your other cards because they're permanent. Permanent cards are easy. Permanent. Like, yeah. yep. Just print out the covenants if you want to play this without Innsmouth. Good yeah. point. That's yep. a great one. Or just pull up the card on your phone and then you can exhaust, <laughs> yeah. and exhaust your phone. Yeah. I've done that before. I don't remember what permanent it was, but I've definitely used my phone as a proxy for an exhausting permanent. <laughs> it probably was a covenant. Um, Confound is next. Uh, we are up to level three. It's a two-cost seeker event that's an insight and a trick. And it says, Parlay, choose an enemy at your location, test uh, Intellect X, where X is the chosen enemy's evade value. If you succeed, discover two clues at your location. Then, if the chosen enemy is non-elite, automatically evade it. It does not ready during the next upkeep phase. Oh. Wow. It'll never work, Herbert. Is the flavor text. That's... Oh, I think sure. that's Herbert West from Reanimator, your favorite movie. Oh, it must be. Yeah. Hey, I love that movie. <laughs> Uh, trick, so Rita can take it, but wouldn't. No. Uh, this is maybe just an Alessandra card, yeah. but uh, it's an intellect test against their evade, and the upside is two clues and two turns of locking that enemy down. That's pretty powerful. Very powerful. It's it's weird to, um, as a seeker, it's weird to think about spending that much XP on like enemy management, but if you're solo, you need to, yeah. maybe. Um, I think it's Alessandra for the most part. Seems like an all-around good card that I have trouble seeing myself putting high on the list to spend experience on. Well, that shouldn't be. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it's too fast insight, but I don't think it's how Joe would want to deal with enemies, so... Oh, that's true. Yeah. Mm. Uh, He can't take it... No, wait, I forgot. Joe is a secret. (laughs) It's Guardian that he only takes up to level two. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, (laughs) All right. Uh, next up is Super Microscope. Yeah. Uh, it's a two cost, four XP, double book, item, tool, and science. After an enemy at location is successfully evaded or defeated, place a resource on Microscope as evidence. For two actions, investigate. You get plus two book for this investigation for each evidence, max plus six. If you succeed, you may spend up to three evidence to discover that many additional mm-hmm. clues at your location. It is fine. It's not that much better than original microscope for four XP. It's just the the it doubles boost. it doubles the intellect boost and lets you spend up to three instead of up to two. That's what's different, right? Yep. Yeah. Does it cost less resources? No. I think mm. it's like it's a little bit misleading, maybe, because it increases the max you can spend, but I actually think this might be better in lower player counts yeah, where you're like spending like one, because I think the difference in like plus one and plus two book when you have like one evidence is important, but I I, I think it's pretty rare that you're gonna be like oh Ooh, you're wait. not gonna you're not gonna use this double action when you have one evidence on it um ever right I don't know that that's true it, it like well, gives you plus two book and it like reduces the skill test well I think I think mm. the the interesting thing is you 
are always getting the passive boost regardless of how much evidence you're spending. So if you have three on this, sure. in the level zero, you're getting a plus three. Yeah, yeah. If you're, if you're you know, doing it at, at this one, you have a plus six, yeah. which is significant. Yeah. And then you can choose to spend as much evidence as you'd like. So if you're just trying to get two or three clues or four clues, this one is always gonna have a bigger scale. Yeah, I think boost. when you're at one or two evidence, being at plus two or plus four is a big improvement big over being over plus one or yeah. plus two. Once you get to like three evidence, like I think the plus three from the level zero was fine. It's good. But I think at one or two sense. evidence, this is a big improvement. To spend, you this has really got to land being pretty focal, I think, to your like play pattern mm -hmm. to spend four XP on upgrading it though. Sure, like, uh, which I'm not sure microscope. Well, I mean, it kind of like it's a card that you want out early and then to leave and play the whole game. Yeah, I guess it kind of it kind of needs to be core to what you're doing, and mm -hmm. I don't I don't know if it's good enough for that, but. Hmm. Feels okay. I mean, in, cool. in a in a two player campaign, you're often like there's not many cards that a lot allow you the opportunity to gain four clues in an action or two actions yeah. in this case. So that 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 is interesting. Uh, so we uh, have been putting a few uh, neutral cards into each video, and this one we were going to look at the basic weaknesses. But first, there's one more thing. Kyle has the ravenous Myconid, and it's up. All right. To look at. <clears throat> yeah. Let's look at this ravenous Myconid the unidentified of this pack mm -hmm. it is a creature monster flora flora and science so it's audrey too <laughs> and it's singing feed me see more anyway is that um, from it's from little, little shop of horrors <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> audrey's in netrunner now by the way you gotta start playing netrunner again i mean i'm always down <laughs> all right it's a limit one per deck hmm. as an action you can search your bonded card for uncanny growth and add it to your hand and then as a different action, if Myster uh, if Ravenous uh, Myconid has three or more growths on it, move each growth to your research po resource pool as resources, record in your campaign log that you have classified a new species. Nice. How do we get growths? Uh, maybe the bonded card holds the key. <laughs> Let's find out. It's me. <laughs> my hair is in my mouth, or someone's hair is in my mouth. Brandon. <laughs> oh yeah, totally mine. Um, <laughs> it's a uh, uncanny growth is a one cost event that's bonded to the ravenous myconid. Um, insight and science traded. It's an investigate action. After this test resolves, place one resource on ravenous myconid as growth for each point you succeed by. Okay. And then set this aside out of play. If you fail, return it to your hand instead. So mm -hmm. you only have to retrieve it with the action on the, the myconid once to pull it in. And then if you succeed, it'll go out of play. If you fail, it'll just come right back. And, and so to identify this thing, you have to do that three times. You have to succeed by three because it's put a growth for each point you succeed. Oh, by. oh, so you don't have to use the action to get it. You could just just succeed by three once. Oh, so yeah. that's that's pretty reasonable. Yeah, I think yeah. it's a it's a it's a reasonable ask. Um, we'll see how good the upgrades are. You just have to succeed by two, and then have uh, that other card that boosts that, by one. <laughs> when you would succeed, you succeed yeah. by one more. Man, yeah, there there is a. I mean, that's a great archetype. That's always been in Arkham. Anyway, tell us about the upgrades. We have three different ones. <clears throat> The first one is the Sentient Strain. Mm -hmm. uh, two cost assets and four experiences is re uh, represented okay. by all of them. Uh, research to limit once per deck. As a free trigger action, you can search your bonded card for that uncanny growth and add it to your hand, limit once per round. As a reaction, when an investigator draws a non-weakness treachery card, if their location shroud is equal to or less than the, mis the ravenous mycotid's growth, Mm. Cancel that treachery effect and discard it. Remove all growth from it. Oh, you oh. spend the growth for treachery for cancels. Treachery cancellation based on the shroud of the location they're standing on when they draw the treachery. Oh, yeah. that's, that's that's weird. Pretty yeah. pretty mind bending. I'm not yeah. gonna lie. Um, so uh, I guess the the objective here is get uncanny growth, crush and investigate. Yeah. Get like five growth counters. Sit with it until you are ready to cancel. Did, did it spend that much growth or remove it all? Removes it all. Oh, okay. So you don't want to need to. You don't want to go too far out of your way to get six growth on it, and then some <laughs> cancel treasure. That when someone's on a two shroud, like then you then you are a little wasteful. I guess. Yeah. And there can you get multiple like growth multiple times, or is it? It's a you. It's a free action to pull it into hand once per round. Okay, yeah. so you can. 
uh, take it back every turn. Mm -hmm. Yep, you can okay. take it back every turn, or you could keep it in your hand if you're yeah. not going to use it. Recurring cancel is really good. Yeah, I agree. A recurring cancel is great. It also has one health, one uh, sanity from mm -hmm. the beginning, from level zero. The next strain is the carnivorous strain. This is really Audrey, too. No. <laughs> uh, it is no longer creature science traded. It is monster and science traded. Nice. Um, as a free action, again, pulling your bonded card to your hand. As a different free action, choose a non-elite enemy at your location with equal to or fewer remaining health than the amount of growth. Mm. Defeat that enemy. Remove all growth. Really I feel like wild. it should also, it should be like remove all, all growth and then gain one or something. Like it digests the enemy and grows. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Oh, uh, that's cool. I uh, like it. That seems great. Yeah. yeah. Another and another way for Seekers to do some serious damage. Actionless enemy defeating. Yeah. <laughs> seems good. <laughs> seems good. <laughs> uh, actionless as far as growth. You did have to do like a, you had to do a weak investigate action to get the growth, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then the final strain is the nurturing strain. Aw, this one is now just flora and science traded. So the initial one is like all of the different right. uh, traits, and then you refine it and find the actual strain here. Um, and this one is the same thing, free action to search your bonded cards, and then the free action on the second side is remove all growth from it, either heal that much damage slash horror from Ravenous Myconid, mm. or move that much damage or horror from an investigator or ally asset at your lo location to the Ravenous Myconid. So, mm. so this is really interesting, especially with the possibilities of healing allies and things like that. So you have um, infinite health and sanity with this one. Yeah, I like it. It's pretty good. Yeah, I think an infinite health seems like a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does. It does seem like if you can really crush some investigation tests using uh, uncanny growth, which also still, uh, it doesn't say instead of getting a clue. Yeah, you also get a clue. So you yeah. also get a clue. So it's like a regular yeah. investigate that also is, you know, powering this thing up. You take two damage, two horror on it. You have four growth tokens. You just cancel all that. That's pretty wild. Yeah, one thing that uh, at least I kind of glazed over on Uncanny Growth is that it does cost a resource. So you can return it to your hand for free each round, but you're mm -hmm. spending a resource every time that you play it. Yeah. So uh, it's not free. No. And then also, uh, even if you wanted to play it every round, you would not necessarily find the opportunity to, like, if you already have five growth counters, it doesn't serve a purpose. No, that's uh, true. But so, if you're in, yeah. like, three or four player, there's probably something you want to cancel every round. Uh, true. Did that have to be at... It, there are any location at Carousel Stroud or at your location um, for the, the one that can cancel treacheries? It's when Investigator draws a non-weakness treachery wow. card if their location. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, if you're so like if they don't have to your player location. and you can, like, succeed, crush these tests... That seems really good. Yeah. You're going to use that every turn. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that seems great. It's a science asset, too, so Kate can put a clue on it. That's true. <laughs> We made it, guys. Uh, that's cool. I like I like the ravenous myconid. Um, yeah. I'm sad that it's limit one per deck, so that I can't shrewd analysis it. Like I have a oh yeah, so I have an oh always... even the research did yeah. limit one per deck. Yeah, you yeah. can shrewd analysis it. It won't save you any money, but it will help you choose if you're having <laughs> trouble choosing which one. So how would that work? Do you randomly pick two and then choose between them and just narrows down one option? I, I don't actually... So I think you would just randomly pick one. Let us know in the comments how shrewd analysis <laughs> interact with the random spike in it. Um, so it, it, would, it would still be limit one even if you're playing different strains, right? It doesn't matter. Because they have the same title. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, even though they have different subtitles, it's yep. a, it, you would only get to play one of them. Uh, I think that's cool, though. It kind of it's weird. It has like nothing to do with anything else, but that's fine. Like but I think we've, we've already had a curse identified card. Yeah, I think uh, that's fine though because it's it's a limit one per deck. You don't want to have to build around this card, right? Sure, because you're like yeah. not gonna see it in half the games. Yeah. Well, to be fair, you're seeker, so you can like oh yeah, draw you're drawing three cards times and, through and your like deck. search through oh, your yeah. deck. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, just play the card that uh, the double action to draw five. Like, yeah, you'll find it. You'll find yeah. it. <laughs> Uh, okay, cool. There is not, um, there, I, I feel like this set of cards had two or three kind of like almost half developed themes to them, right? Like there were like two or three cards that deal with the succeeding by specific amounts, two or three curse related cards, two or three kind of tool and, and tool synergy cards. It's a weird hodgepodge. Yeah. It is a hodgepodge, but I was a lot more excited by the cards in general than the guardian cards. Yeah, yeah like, I think I agree. I would too. I didn't um, think there was, like, hot garbage in this. Like, I wasn't like, this is an unusable card, as right. much as I saw in Guardian and Rogue. 
Uh, true, true. We definitely have seen some bad cards in this box, and yeah, I guess I'd, I'd agree. Yellow is still really I'd good. agree that they were most, <laughs> yeah, 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 right. <laughs> it's impossible to make a bad yellow card. Uh, oh, there, there were a couple bad ones here. I think control variable was bad. But they're also, like, like a, lot of them are, of them. a lot of them are fun, too. Like, yeah, There's that's a true. combination of, like, a lot of pretty strong ones and some pretty fun ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Cool. Like transmogrifying a monster into a massive. Yeah, like that's very that's different. Incredible. That is, yeah. I before. think that was that was maybe the highlight of this pack yeah. for me. Yeah, I look forward to making like a giant a giant super wheel, <laughs> giant rat, <laughs> giant rat, yeah, giant yeah. swarm rats. <laughs> Oh jeez, a, a massive swarm. <laughs> is is that big rats or just no, more rats? Just more rats. <laughs> <laughs> Almost forgot. So I think there's probably an awkward cut there. Uh, we did say we were going to touch on the basic weaknesses. Uh, here's one. The silver moth. <laughs> I know, smooth, right? <laughs> Real smooth. <laughs> the silver moth. Uh, it's an item and a relic. Uh, it's an asset basic weakness. Um, with no cost because re the revelation effect, uh, you know, I'll get to that. It's an accessory slot. Mm. I was going to say the revelation effect puts it into play, but that's not actually what this says. It says, revelation, you must either put the silver moth into play in your threat area or take one horror and shuffle it into your deck. And it cannot leave play except by the double action ability below. So you have the option to put it in your accessory slot until you want to double action it out or not lose the accessory you have in play by taking a horror and shuffling it back in. Hmm. It says you get minus one sanity oh. uh, and a double action to discard it. Uh, and then I think these are all pretty um, like symmetrical with one another. Wanna, wanna give us one and yeah. we'll talk about them at the end? Uh, maimed hand, it's a hand slot. You must either put maimed hand into play or take a damage and shuffle it into your deck. It cannot leave play except by the double click. You get minus one health, double click, discard maimed hand. Uh, back injury, which is a pretty gruesome Ooh, like, yeah, gash part. across someone's back. Jeez, uh, you must either put it into your threat, er put it into play in your threat area, or take one damage and shuffle it into your deck. Minus one health, and it's the body slots. And vow of Drizztalek. <laughs> sure, yeah. <laughs> it's an arcane slot. You must either put it into play or take a horror and shuffle it into your deck. You cannot leave play except by the double click. Minus one sanity. Double click to discard. Interesting. Uh, yeah, it seemed fine. Yeah, it seemed fine. It's so much randomness in terms of, like, you know, if you're a guardian and you get the arcane slot one, it's like, who cares, you know? But if yeah. you're a guardian and you get the hand slot one, like... Although, like, the sanity, minus one sanity for a lot of guardians could be detrimental. I guess. To but yeah, like, to, to be down to four sanity or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, a weakness that's, like... You have minus one sanity, and if you really care about it, you can double click it. Like that's pretty mild. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. What? Um, well, I guess the, so. The horror is not direct, right? So if it would, if that minus one sanity would kill you when you draw it, you can sure. take the horror and put it on a, a soak. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The the scary thing about drawing this late and just putting it into play is that the minus to a stat can just knock you out. I'm gonna say bad for Calvin. Mm. You heard it here first. Yeah, you don't want minus to his... <laughs> no, you don't want minus health or sand to be... But maybe you want damage and horror. Yeah. <laughs> True. So it just never hits the <laughs> never hits the table. It always gets shuffled back in. You know, with... um, The other thing with shuffling is that cards like Scroll of Secrets that, can't, that have a chance to discard a weakness mm. get better Like if you have multiple shots to shuffle it back in. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, that's true. It is. Uh, yeah, I feel like there's... um not that many ways to like build to to tech your or, or not very not very many incentives i guess and tools to like tech your deck around what basic weakness you got sometimes there are i wish there were more this kind of does though like maybe if the silver moth is your basic weakness you just will skip over putting an, ex uh, an accessory or not put uh all your experience into a level yeah. five one right because i mean normally you build your deck before you see your weakness right yeah. but it's like yeah if you have a level zero accessory that's not that important that's like the first card that you upgrade out of. Yep, yep. I just say I think this is these are good. these are pretty weak for weaknesses. Like they're like they're, they're not, not too bad. They're not too bad. Uh, I like, agree. I think the the one that jumps to my head is Denver Morphosis, which is the one that I mean comes into play and knocks out both your hands. Don't, don't even talk. Like that one was designed by the like Arkham Knights card council. <laughs> they just they just fuck. What us. do they know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Leave it to the professionals. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, yeah, I mean, I think these are, the fact that not only does it take up, like, you know, just one slot, but also the fact that you can choose to shove it off. So, like, yeah. you know, if you just got out your flamethrower, yeah, okay, the one hand slot's going to be 
rude. Let's just shuffle it back in. Let's use up all my flamethrower next time it shows up. Maybe I won't have that, you know, brand right. new flamethrower right. in hand. It, it seems, it seems uh, fun. I'd be happy to draw these in my uh, weakness pool. Also, if you have a full collection of Arkham, you're never going to draw these. I mean, that's true for any other specific basic weakness. You have like 80 yeah. of them now. <laughs> I've, been try I've been trying to, uh, whenever I build the deck, I leave the basic weaknesses like in the, like not in the card pool of basic weaknesses so that every time I am drawing new weaknesses, it's a smaller pool. Wait. That's so like every, awesome. so when, when I, when I do basic weakness drawing in general in my campaigns, I usually pick two from my giant collection and choose which one is either more interesting or, you know, which one I don't want or uh, uh, would, oh, you would rather two. have. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and then from that point, uh, every time like, like that weakness just made it into my deck, it's embedded. I will leave it in like my card box instead of putting it back to oh, the Oh, so you just don't get one you had lately. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. That's so what I, you, when you said a new one, I didn't know if you meant from the newest expansion. No, 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 no. Just yeah. like, just so I'm like, I'm, I'm seeing all my weaknesses as I go through my, my pool. I, when I, when a new set comes out, I often just randomly pick from the new weaknesses. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. me too. Yeah, same. Especially, like, the first time playing a new campaign, I played yeah. the, the weaknesses that came out with it. Yeah, same. Uh, but for the most part, yeah, they, if you're playing by the letter of the rules, new basic weaknesses have, like, the worst diminishing returns of anything <laughs> in printed in this game. Because you're just literally, like, you're going to see them in 1% of your campaigns. And do you like even think you're going to play yeah. enough campaigns to, like, be likely to see that in the rest of your time in Arco? <laughs> maybe, maybe there's, like, a format where everyone draws, like, five weaknesses, and then, like, you Takes can, like, the newest. pick... No, no, or no, no, like picks like someone else's weakness by like what's gonna screw them the most. Like, <laughs> in a cooperative game, I don't know if that's the right spirit, I'm but I like, like it. I was having another, uh, I was having a conversation recently uh, about how cool it would be to have a campaign that is the opposite of Dream Eaters, where there are two groups in competition in some uh, way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, <laughs> that, that could be a facet of that. For sure. you, you, send, you choose the weakness to send to the other side. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, Kyle, we've only got two classes left. Which one are we doing next? Okay, so I, I want to end on Mystic, so I think we're going to do a Ooh. Survivor next. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm, uh, I mean, the, yeah, you, the, like, that's a binding decision, so, so we can't change it. Uh, I'm excited to see Mystic because I do feel like, uh, the curses and blesses have so far felt like they just, like, require ends with. Like, yeah. they have not really felt developed, like, you, you're not really seeing a deck archetype from these cards. So I'm hoping that Mystic fills in the gaps. And I think it will, based on what I know, limitedly what I know about yeah. the Investigator. We'll see. Uh, but the Investigator just adds curses and blesses to the bag and gets an extra action out of him. It doesn't have flashy, cool stuff to be like, you spend six We're going to find out. You know? <laughs> yeah. But not next week. You chose Red. No. Next week, we're going Survivor. <laughs> we're going for Hank. Speaking of old investigators no one was asking for coming back. <laughs> 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 all right yeah so we're gonna go down a different rabbit hole of uh life and death and not healing and all mm -hmm. that fun stuff next time till then be optimal <laughs>